Hello everyone and welcome back to the 112th episode of the Top 5 Weekly. Now for those of you that are new here, this is a series where I take a look at the most popular creations on the Steam Workshop, analyze each one of the creations, ask their features and finally I'll test them out here in Stormworks. But before we get started, if you are enjoying the video, so click that like and subscribe button and while watching, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So with that all said, let's get straight into it and get started with this video. And starting off with the first creation, we have the KM8300. This is a 3x3 turbo diesel V8 prefab engine. Uh, looks pretty cool. Obviously, it's got everything built in it, so you can pretty much just plop it into your creation. It should be good to go. So let's spawn in and see how it works. And spawning in the creation, you can see this looks really cool. They've gone and used, if I'm correct, they've used a pivot inside here. Yes, just over there. That actually goes and rotates this. This is how you get that V shape with this engine. Now it looks like it's quite a big powerful one. It's got quite a lot of cylinders, obviously four on this side, looks like another four on that side, all connected to the same crankshaft going along. We have in front here, which looks like the fuel system. So this is where you would, yep, it has a fuel tank just over here. And that would then go feed through into the engine and then up through into all the cylinders, as you can see indicated there by the green. Looks like we've also got exhaust coming through the back here, going into some impeller pumps and then going out into the exhaust piece over there. And then we have the air coming in over here. Uh, looks like it comes through also the impeller pumps and then goes through to the actual engines. Yeah, just over. Let's see, where does the air come in? Must come in over oh, there. We go. It comes in here at the top. So that's where the air comes in. OK, see how really cool looking. It's got a flywheel on there, another gearbox. So pretty much this is all set to go. You can just add it to your creation. Now, I think we're correct. We have to get the key switch on. And you can see turbo pressures there. And then we can hold that and wait for it to start. And there we go. The engine is up and running. RPM is nice. Turbo pressures there. And then we also have a throttle here that we can use to test it. So you can see that's gone and pushed it up there. Uh, if I'm correct, it's got an RPS limiter on it. So that's why it's not revving up too much. Um, but yeah, really cool little creation. I like that, you know, you have these prefab engines and they look beautiful. And you can just put them into your creation. Now, I think the creator has quite a few different versions of this uh, that you can obviously use for different types of creations. Smaller ones, larger ones. And this is obviously one that you would go and put in quite a big, I would probably say like container ship or cargo ship. So yeah, beautiful little engine. And really nice they've gone and created this for the community to use in their own creations. So let's go ahead, let's move on to the next creation for the episode. And moving on to the next creation, we have the carrier-based VTOL Stealth Fighter. This is the TR-34. Now this is meant to be a single seat, single engine, all-weather stealth, multi-role combat aircraft. Looks really cool from the workshop page, really nice and compact at the same time. So let's spawn in and see how it flies here in the world of Stormworks. And spawning in the jet, and it looks really nice. A very different shape from what we used to here in Stormworks. But um, yeah, very unique. You can kind of see this piece here has kind of been pushed out. I don't know if that slides in, I'm guessing it does. But we can kind of see underneath it, and we've got propellers, we've got rocket boosters. I'm guessing those are the weapons. Could be wrong though. We've got some more fans at the back here. Very, very interesting design to this. Really interesting. Let's jump in and let's actually see how this thing works. So I think we need to grab the handle here. There we go. And then we can get inside the seat. So we've got a nice little HUD. We've got lift fans, altitude set, looks like a map system, throttle, altitude hold, radar, wheel brakes, ignition, radar, composite jammer, gyro, battery, landing gear, Cool, so there's quite a few things going on in here. We even got missiles, so that must have been what we saw underneath it. It must be in the missiles. Weapons bay. Cool, now there is a little bit of a starting up procedure to this. We need to get the ignition on, so we're going to do that. I'm guessing, yeah, hold it. Now the aircraft actually starts in VTOL mode, and then we can switch it to forward flight later on. Cool, so we are getting started up here. We've got a lift fan, we've also got a throttle, which is great. Okay, you can actually see we're lifting up already. So let's go and landing gear up. 
Okay, so that's starting to get up. You can see the weapons bay actually closed. So three to open that up. Ooh, that is really cool. And then we can do four to fly missiles. <laughs> that is awesome. Look at that. And then you can close the weapon bay. That's really nice. We've got flares on here. So two flares at the back. Cool. Okay, I like that little hatch that goes and opens up there. That's pretty cool at the same time. Okay, let's get the canopy closed. Six. There we go. So canopy has been closed now. And we should be able to use up and down. Yep. To move it up and down in VTOL mode, as you can see. Really straightforward. So we can obviously increase that if we wanted to. So you have the lift fan over there. We've got throttle. We can increase to altitude hold. So might as well set that and try that in a few minutes. So let's do 300. Uh, heading hold. We've got radar. So you can use the radar there. Nice. Composite jammer. Wow. <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay, so I guess uh, we can start going through. So let's do forward thrust, and then we're going to get the lift fan off. And there we go, we got forward flight. Nice, very smooth. Let's get our alt hold on. And we're going to go up to our altitude. And there we go, <laughs> as simple as that. Really easy. How well does it... Okay, so roll works pretty cool. Let's get alt hold off. How well does it fly? It's a little bit, a little bit stiff on the steering, but it makes it a little bit easier to control, to be honest. But I really like the weapons bay that goes and pops out underneath it. That's really cool. Let's get old hold back on here. So yeah, just really pretty straightforward to go and use. We can even get a heading hold on if we want to, and that way we fly in a straight direction. So that's really cool. Yeah, just overall really nice to use and easy. If we want to, we could obviously disable that, disable that, decrease, put lifting fans on, decrease forwards thrust. And now we're in VTOL mode. So just like that, really easy. And then we can go and fly in VTOL mode, which is simple as it gets. And then we can go down for landing if we want to. Now you can actually, I remember seeing there was the gyro, so I want to test that out and see if, if the controls become a little bit more sensitive if we were to use that. So let's get our board on, that on lifting fan off. Okay, let's get that off, let's take gyro off. Oh yeah, so that actually is much easier now, much more sensitive without the gyro on. There we go, that looks much better. Nice and sensitive, we can probably get throttle up a bit. Do a little bit more speed on this thing. Oh yeah, we're doing good speed now. About 250, plus minus. Nice, I like that. You don't see any exhaust either. Obviously it's all little fans and things. Really cool, look at that. Spot on. Good job. A really nice little little VTOL. Definitely recommend playing around with this. Maybe some more rockets in it. <laughs> Just because of why not. Um, but yeah, really cool. Let's go and let's move on to the next creation for the episode. And moving on to the next creation, we have the Aqua Evac. Now, this is meant to be a submarine that was actually built for my challenge that's coming up in a few days' time. Now, this is actually the first of the three submarines we're going to be checking out in this video, which were obviously created for the NJ Challenge. This one looks really cool. The creator said that this one's inspired from their favorite movie, which is the Atlantis Lost Empire. You can definitely see that already. Uh, and it really looks pretty cool. So let's go and spawn it and see how it works. And spawning in the creation definitely got a very unique style to it. Underneath, we can see we've got tons of little propellers and things uh, for moving either left or right, up and down. We've got... Looks like little fins on the side that have gone and popped out. I'm guessing those will go and fold away. I could be wrong, we'll find out. Looks like we've got some thrust here at the back. So one there and then two at the top. Just overall, really interesting design to this. Lots of lights all over it. And looks like a little area there where you would possibly be able to see out. So I've already got one spawned and down here. So we can actually see how it works in the water. So let's go and jump on it. So we're going to jump up. Nice little walkway here that we can go and get through to our hatch. 
close that off and we're presented with equipment or driving seat diving equipment cargo bay okay so looks like maggles and a winch so this would go and open and you can drop this down and connect things that's pretty smart and then at the back it looks like we've got our pumps and things so that's also quite nice cool tons of batteries all the way through here oh no <laughs> close that and close that and let's see how this thing works so at our seat we have i think on off here so big map or oh, sorry a big camera with depth we also got our compass readings looks like camera for underneath the creation and then we got a little bit of info here another info and then we also got our map nice a little radio interior lights spotlights exterior wow very bright very bright let's get the spotlights off what else do we have we got maggles we got the drain for the cargo bay crane up and down we've got open cargo bay okay that's pretty cool so you can actually open it from here that's quite nice so we could open that area up it then would go and flood itself which is fine you would go and drop the winch whatever it is close the cargo bay and then we could use the drain cargo bay so that should then go and drain that whole area for us let's have a look so you can actually see in there which is that's a really cool so by accident you don't come here like oh i'm gonna open it and then all of a sudden the water comes flooding through here so i'm guessing that would go and drain in a few seconds probably takes a few a few minutes for it to drain yeah so you can see there it is currently draining it's just taking a little bit of time for it to drain that's fine let's carry on uh what else do we have so we've got flares emergency beacons and fold fins so you can fold everything so it becomes nice and compact so it can be fitted into like a container or something it looks like it's got some connectors and anchors there at the top too so we're all really cool let's go and unfold the fins i've just gone and launched the flare which is extremely bright uh and now we can use our thrusters so w and s is to move forwards and backwards so pretty straightforward we've got left and right to steer we've also got strafe left and right and then depth up and down so i want to try the strafing so okay yeah so strafing works perfectly fine too very nice and clean okay let's see if we can go down so let's go down depth there we go that was really quick okay perfect so I think it would probably be a little bit easier once you had once you had actually that cargo bay area filled up. So for example, open it. Yeah, now you can see I think it will be a little bit easier to do your depth and stuff now. Let's go forwards. Let's see how that works. Yeah. So very steady now that that's open we're now operating i guess we can also close that and then obviously do drain nice overall this looks like it does work submarines are a little bit hard to get 100 percent working especially for these challenges but yeah what a cool creation we're definitely going to come back to this when we do the challenge video so come and have a look at that in a late stage let's go and move on to the next one for the video and moving on to the next creation, we have the Deep Sea Recovery Submarine. This is another one for the NJ Challenger we will be checking out in a future video. However, let's have a look at it today because it is in the top five. Now, this one is apparently, of course, designed for the challenge, but also for career mode and much more. So let's go and spawn and see how it works. And spawning in the submarine, you can hear it actually already turned on, but I like the design to this. Looks really cool. We've got some spotlights here. It looks like maggles, some more spotlights, some connectors. Pretty much tons of just equipment and things here in the front that we can use. Really cool. It looks like we've got a ton of propellers underneath their sides, underneath their two maggles over there, and some more propellers at the back with some fin rudders and things. So, really pretty cool. Let's go and actually jump into the one that's in the water. So, just over here, we can go and get it in, hopefully. So, we're going to jump up here. We've got, looks like, a air filter, a ram there, some more connectors and things. We've got fuel tank. Oh, I think this one, if I'm correct, this one actually has a buoy system that can go up to about 100 meters. We're going to check that out. Let's go open the hatch up. And how do we 
Okay, so the hatch goes and closes by itself. That's really useful because I couldn't really see it there. What do we have at the back? Hatch magnets. Cool. We got systems, breakers and things. Nothing really else at the back. Looks like this is obviously the only compartment we can get into, which is fine. We've got throttle. We've got generator. Systems. We've got the buoy that we can go and deploy. Crane. Nice. Arms. Light settings. You can change. Nice. And then at the front here, a bunch of screens and things. Cycle the screens. Cycle instruments. Launch flares. But alt hold, surface resets, front spots, exterior lights. Oh, very bright. <laughs> very, very bright. Okay, let's try and go backwards. So we should be able to move backwards if I'm correct. So we've got forwards, backwards. So two is backwards. Okay, so pretty straightforward there. And then we can go forwards, which is one. And then we got three and four, which is prop throttle up and down. Five is to turn the seat. Where are we going to turn the seat to? Turn seat. Not too sure what the turn seat does. But okay. Um, very interesting. Let's see. So if you were to, for example, now, if we were to use forwards one, and then we can use W and S to control the pitch. So that way we can, in theory, go down like that. Cool. Now we can also, if I'm correct, we can activate the alt hold. Okay, so that's on now so target depth we can bring it down so let's do target depth of five so then it should just go down to that target depth very smart now i want to deploy the i want to deploy the system where we can go and deploy the buoy so there that goes and then in theory we should be able to put the generator on That's really cool. So now we theoretically recharging and that can go up to a hundred meters apparently. So we could go and decrease our depth again. That should just stay up there. That, that is really smart. And we also have strafing, which is nice. So that's a left and right to strafe. Yep. There we go. Very nice. We can use the arms too, so arms up and down. Got a crane up and down too. Maggles. Arms connectors. Yeah, really cool. Props throttle. Okay, so you can put that on too if we wanted to. And that way we can just move forwards without touching anything. Which is quite nice. You can see at the back how the, the actual little boy thing has gone and extended out. Because we're moving forwards. So that is pretty cool too. Beautiful little submarine. I like it. Going to check it out in the further, obviously, within the video uh, for this challenge. But beautiful. Really, pretty cool. So that's it. Let's go ahead. Let's move on to the next one for the episode. And moving on to the last creation, we have the Subnor 72. This is a compact utility submarine. And once again, another one built for the NJ challenge that we'll be checking out in a later video in a few days time. Now this one is meant to be a small compact one, but also the same size as a container. It's actually got some mangles on it, so you can actually go and attach it to um, Logs's VTOL slash helicopter, which is really cool. I know he's got a lot of different um, pieces that you can attach to it. For example, like there's the bomb bomb one. There's also the submarine one. There's a whole bunch of different containers that you can attach to his his helicopter, which is pretty cool. Or the actual module, shall we say? So let's run this in and see how it works. And spotting in the last creation definitely looks really cool. Um, ISO compatible, as you can see. So this will be one of his modules that you can attach to his helicopter slash VTOL. Um, so really pretty cool. Looks like we've got some arms here at the front. A nice huge big window in the front too. With a nice little central control panel. Uh, some thrusters, some propellers on either side. Looks like a hatch to get in. And another hatch at the top there. So let's make our way to the one that's already in the water. So floating, it seems like it's floating pretty well. 
Let's go and jump on it and see if we can get in. So a little hatch we can get into. And close the hatch off. And we're straight away inside. Here looks like we've just got the hatch and some equipment and things. And then we jump into the driving seat. Very nice. Very easy to see everything that's around us. You can see those arms there. Let's go and get this turned on. And do thrusters, engines, bilge pumps. Got some floodlights. Spotlights on the arms. Containers. Heater, interior lights. Illumination flare we can drop. We've got a little map screen. We've got some depth on there, which is quite cool. Knots also, X and Y. We've got the arms that we can extend and retract. So I think we can do, yeah, so it's got the same on either side. You've got arm up, arm down, and then arm left and arm right. Nice. So you can actually do it on all axes, which is really cool. Very good. I like that. Okay, so let's see how this thing works. So we're going to go forwards. So it should be W and S. Yep, WNS works. Okay, so you can see those have extended there at the top. Interesting. Uh, let's go and get our depth down. So, target depth is up and down. Okay, so let's get us about five. There we go. See how did that work? Yep, worked pretty well. Let's go forwards. And we are moving forwards. You can see knots, about seven, eight knots. Very straightforward. Turning. Turns pretty well. Turn the other direction. Yep. So those four four little things there are definitely working. And you can see he's using a gyro there to stabilize it looks like. I'm not too sure what that little indicator light there is for. I'm guessing it's for the connectors. That's the only thing I can think of what it's there for. But uh, you're really cool. I like this. Floodlights, arm lights. And you can nicely see around us now. Got the flares underneath there too. Beautiful little submarine. Cool. So guys, I'm going to end it over there. Um, definitely go and check out these subs. As I said, I will be looking at these three subs in a video in a couple of days time. So that's why we're not going fully into detail about them. But they are really cool. Um, they look like they work really well too. Specifically designed for the challenge too at the same time, which is really quite nice. So with that said, if you want to check out any of the creations that I have looked at in this episode, I will leave links in the video description below. Go share some love over to the creators. And if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget that like button and also the subscribe button if you don't want to miss any future content. And until next week, we will see you then.